welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna talk about nitrous. Now, given that I don't have a racetrack, it is 18 degrees here. Um, roads are covered in snow. It's gonna be a little bit more explaining off of old videos and kind of what we were doing versus the normal I do it and explain it at the same time. So I do apologize, but with the weather the way it is, um, it's a little cold for nitrous. Uh, the bottle pressures are lower. The intake air temps already really cold, um, and I, I, yeah, it's just it, it's that's the way it's got to be. I apologize. Now you guys have already seen how we installed this kit on the 07, so I'm gonna kind of skip that. We got the bottle mounted in the back. Technically, there should be a tube to vent the bottle pressure if it blows the safety valve open, <clears throat> but I don't know. I just why why bother? right under the hood once you get your bottle mounted your line ran you have your solenoids that's what these are right here there are several different sizes at least in the nitrous express line you have <clears throat> i want to say a 0 0.093 you have the 125 you have the 150s and I'm pretty sure they have, I wanna say I have a couple of their 375s, I wanna say, They're, a lot of people call them trash cans. Um, <clears throat> and what they're referring to is the orifice inside this solenoid. So when the solenoid pulls open, how much diameter you can do. Now, why that is important, you'll hear guys talk about, I got three 136 jets, blah, blah, blah. If they have these small solenoids, it's actually not a full 136. You can only flow as much as this will allow you. Once you get past that bottleneck, you only have one dash six line. You guys can see here, we got the two wide into one. That also limits you quite a bit as well. When you mount the solenoids, I suggest you mount them in a spot away from heat, away from the weather. I chose right here, works good. I've also seen guys tuck them inside the cowl and just make the nipples pop out. Bottom line, you want them quick to be serviceable. I have had a couple of these stick open, so it's always a good idea to make sure they're easy to get to. And then you have your feed lines right here. These take a dash four, and then these are generally dash three. I have seen these in dash four as well. <clears throat> and then you have your spray nozzle. The spray nozzle is what atomizes the nitrous. Uh, and this is also where the jet gets hold, uh, held, excuse me, Wow, English. This is where the jet gets held. And yeah, I use a little bit of Loctite 545. These are eighth inch MPT bungs, which is the most common. <clears throat> now, there are companies, especially like Firepunk and a lot of the pro street, pro mod guys, they run all kinds of setups. I've seen nitrous spray bars, especially in the gas stuff. They have them where it goes in the throttle body, the carburetor. There are a lot of ways to do it <clears throat> the way I do it. Is with those little atomization nozzles and let me show you what those look like here's the up close of the nozzle comes out on a 180 degree fan here this is the eighth inch mpt and there's the recess and you guys can see here here's the nitrous jet basically sits give me a sec here sits right here the line screws on creates a seal because it's flared and these are the ni nitrous jets um I'm going to say these are made out of brass. Usually it has a logo stamped, NX, and then you guys see 110. That is in relationship to the size of the orifice. So this one is a 99. Then we do have some small ones. You guys can see how small that hole is. So 52. And then that one that I just had. Here we go. This is one of the bigger ones. This is a 136. So you guys can see here, not much left to it. So 136, I think they make like a 150 that still fits a dash three, but it starts to get pretty thin. So depending on how big of a line you have, that really dictates how big um, this hole is. Uh, Cause like I said, if you have a 93 solenoid, right? Like a small spool kit and you put a 136 in there, it's not a 136. Now, if you have a 125 kit and you're on a 110, that's a 110. 
If you want a 136 on a 125 solenoid, it's really not a 136. So you guys can kind of see how that plays into effect there. Here's kind of an up close and personal look. This is the O5's charge pipe. You guys can see in there. Those are the atomization nozzles I was talking about. And this recess here is what the jet sits in. Flare points out and the flare seals this fitting to that supply line from the solenoid. Um, and yeah, this is on the hot side of the intercooler. Now the other style nozzle uses a eighth inch NPT and the jet goes here and it seals with no uh, basically, it doesn't direct any of the nitrous flow. It just sprays it into the pipe. Um, some of your cheaper kits will come with these. I've also made these uh, to work when I was short on the spray nozzles. So definitely not a bad option, but I do feel like the dispersing nozzle uh, helps get it into the pipe evenly. So here's one of my spare solenoids. You guys can see here, um, this is a 125. I can just tell by the part number here uh you have a screen that you want to run so it protects the solenoid from getting any debris here's your feed line and then this is a purge port uh, if you feel so inclined basically you run the nitrous uh, out this way to a little solenoid and it allows you to purge off this line and essentially allows you to purge it up to the needle valve which is pretty awesome Okay, now in here, we have a good example of the different style bottles, okay? Um, I don't really care what brand you run. Uh, Nitrous Outlet has a good bottle. The NOS stuff's pretty good. The Nitrous Express is what I normally use. These are a 15 pound bottle, and these are 10 pound bottles. Uh, this one has sentimental value to me because uh, Tyler Kipp signed this one somewhere right there. Uh, don't suck, so. <clears throat> And the difference you're seeing here, these are a bigger valve inside here. Um, and that allows for more nitrous flow through here. Um, I have ran these with dash eights. Uh, and I, I'm not sure what the choke point is on these. I, I want to say this is a half inch orifice, so you could run dash eight. They normally come dash six. And then these guys generally come like this with a dash four or dash six little nipple adapter right here. Um, and, and that's it. One cool thing about these bottles, if you guys look down here, they come with stickers for weight. So this is a 15 pound nitrous bottle, meaning you can put 15 pounds of nitrous in here. This bottle empty weighs this much, full weighs that much. That way you can do a quick scale and tell how much nitrous is still left in here. The pressure, you can use it um, somewhat, but weight is really how you should be measuring your nitrous as far as what's left in the bottle uh, obviously when this gets down in into this range it's probably empty but it's always a good idea to weigh it um, and then these little guys again 10 pounders a little bit nicer for spool jets or if you are um, not using a lot of it these little bottles can do quite a bit as well and they're a little bit smaller so they fit in spots better one of the things you can do is get a progressive nitrous controller. This is the Maximizer 5 from Nitrous Express. Comes with everything you need to hook it up. Um, generally, you can get this also in a kit that comes with two solenoids and a couple bottles and stuff like that. And the harness here. Um, this one's pretty cool. Uh, it has an optional screen plug in here, which I do have and I can show you guys. And then basically you're able to control two solenoids and then there's additional add-ons to do uh, two more as well so this is meant for two can be used up to four pretty awesome uh really easy to use and i really like this and <clears throat> then your other thing that you may or may not need is a bottle heater <clears throat> now i know you guys have all watched street outlaws and everything else um these go on the bottle and basically they get hot uh they hook up to here there's a relay system and everything and these will essentially excite the nitrous so <clears throat> for you guys that aren't familiar uh when you heat something up it raises the pressure right that's why you see guys using a torch on nitrous um <clears throat> that's also <clears throat> how guys will fill them they'll put them in the freezer uh, to bring the pressure down that way the differential transfers it over but all in all the bottle heaters are pretty nice i'm just way too lazy to put them in but i do have two of them i should probably wire those in for next year so 
We got the Maximizer 5 bottle heaters. Let's go check out some more of this nitrous system. Now the other way you can do it is with momentary switches. That's what these are. So basically the way it's wired in, you click a switch here, this operates one and this operates the other. Um, so like on my 05, I have three that are controlled off that Maximizer 5. I have one right there. And then I have one attached to my steering wheel. The steering wheel one is for spool up. This one is for the 60 foot. If I need it, if it feels lazy, I'll grab that one. And then the three progressives just take over from there. So that's kind of how all that stuff works together um, to get your nitrous in there. With spooling, okay, you're gonna have a momentary button normally. Uh, that norm that momentary button is normally going to be applied to a small solenoid and it's going to be a small kit uh, i love the like 0 0.41 0 0.041 or the 0 0.052 those do really well for me i've seen some guys do like the 0 0.033 and that is in the size of the nozzle um, it's really what you're comfortable with i have spooled a 488 on a 110 jet at the truck street race in new mexico um because my other solenoid failed so it can be done uh you know you're doing it wrong when the truck pops at back at you and uh, i'll put this video up a mire No disrespect to Meyer at all. That truck just was a bear to spool, but that was a 12 valve and he had a 41 and a 52 jet and he had to use them both in different areas to get them up. But basically what you're gonna see is you're gonna bump the button. You'll hear the truck RPM raise. And this is mainly, so this is mainly used when you have a very large turbo setup that doesn't wanna spool up, right? The less time you have to sit on the torque converter, the less heat you build in the torque converter. Uh, which means your transmission temp is going to be a lot lower, which means your tranny should essentially last longer, right? So if you guys always notice on all of our my stuff personally, I get it to spool really quick. Um, that is done on purpose, so I don't put a lot of heat in the trans. Um, but anyway, Meyer had to spool this setup up. It was pretty rough. It was also his first time. Normally, you hit where the engine stops. Like, let's say it's 2,000 RPM with like a single S488. You bump it, you'll see the engine kind of pick up for a second. Now you're at 2,200 RPM. Maybe you got five pounds of boost. Bump it again, bump it, bump it, bump it until you get to the desired RPM and boost you want to be at. Uh, you shouldn't have to sit there and hold it, essentially. Um, I'd say a majority of you guys are doing a 87, 96 turbine. Those are usually pretty easy to spool with just a small kit. You gotta play around with it, but it's like you bump it, you bump it, and you kind of increase the intensity of the bumps uh, as you go through. And practice makes perfect. Nobody uh, is a nitrous expert overnight. I know I certainly am not, but that's how you use it with a spool up. In a dyno pole, it really depends. What I have found dynoing with nitrous, and there's been a lot of failure. And a lot of success. Uh, I learned a lot. I put all of my nitrous on the hot side of the intercooler. I have put it in the cold side of the intercooler pipe and I put it in the intake horn. And I have melted a lot of pistons, heard a lot of engines on the cold side of the intercooler. 
So what I find best is I put it all either in the intake to the turbo or the hot intercooler pipe. It definitely atomizes a lot better and it also seems to soften the hit a little bit on the motor. Um, whereas on the other side, I mean, it's like right into the horn, into the cylinder. So I find the safest way to learn how to do nitrous, put it in that passenger side charge pipe. Works good for me, works good for a lot of people. Um, and then on a dyno pole, it just depends. Like when it's a single turbo, like S400, you gotta have a gate. I would recommend a gate. If you don't use a gate, I got a pretty cool video for that. Not That was a 488 that we were learning how to use a gate and I had way too much pressure sent to the top so the the um, wastegate never actually opened um, but what I find works good on the big turbine s400 stuff so that's your 96 turbine gt55 gt50 all that stuff right around like on the smaller stuff I'll do 32 to 3400 on the bigger stuff I'll do it at like 3500 basically when you start bringing in those big hits of nitrous you want to make sure the motor is going. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure the motor's warm. Uh, what I mean by that, oil temp, uh, I always go by 150-ish degrees uh, when I'm doing those big smacks. Uh, you know, when we're doing a couple 110s, three 110s, three 136s, those big hits, that motor needs to be warm or else bad things can happen. And that's not only just nitrous, that's just a good practice in general. But... I'll hit it, and I usually just hit it all. Um. On my UCC truck, I have one that I do myself, uh, and then I have two that come in on a pedal. Once the pedal hits full throttle, they're on timers. So one kicks on a little earlier than the other to kind of stage the hits. Uh, if you're doing it manually, I find the best thing is you have two hands, use two kits. You have one hand to do one kit, one hand to do the other kit, and you can try to stagger them, but a nitrous pull on a dyno is so short. Most of those runs you guys have seen us do in the 07 and the 05, those are three second dyno pulls. And I know what everyone's gonna say. Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. Well, the more horsepower you make, the shorter those dyno runs get. The only exception to that that I've ever seen is Todd's uh, truck, and it's because he does it all fuel only. Um, I don't know, I mean, cool, I guess. My big thing, and I might get a little hate on it for this, but I don't care if you use nitrous, propane, water, nail polish remover, diesel fuel. Like, if you make a number with nitrous, with propane injection, with whatever, that's a number. So that's how I do it with the dyno. Now that HE351 that we were spraying off, I hit all that at 3000. It really is where your truck makes fuel only power. And I usually subtract about four to 500 RPM. That's when I spray the nitrous. And And I try to kind of stage it, even if it's even if it's a half a second delay on the second kit, I always try to make sure it's a little slower. That way it's not two full kits going right at it. Uh, and I found that works really, found out that for me works really well. Um, other than that on the racetrack, I let the progressive do it all. I feel like most people that use nitrous successfully are doing it with a progressive controller because everything is happening way too fast. I mean, 
a lot of people, even for me, say I should put an air shifter on the 05 or an ant eater or whatever, because the full manual valve body does take my attention as well. So something we might do in the future, but if you're gonna drag race with nitrous, get a, at least like the $100 timer that you set with like a screwdriver works better. I like that Maximizer 5. I have it in both trucks and it works really well. Uh, very easy to use. The last thing I wanna touch on is cylinder, nitrous nozzle size. So you guys have seen, we have different solenoid sizes. We have different feed line sizes, different bottle sizes, all this stuff. The different size nozzles. Now, most of you guys will get a kit. It'll have some smaller ones like a maybe an 031 all the way up to maybe a 110 or a 136. Some of the bigger kits will give you like a 150 or a 145. There is no chart that is applicable that comes in one of those kits. Diesel burns a lot different. If there is fuel there and you add nitrous to it, it will continue to burn it. Now, my personal opinion, and this is something that I would really love if Firepunk or whoever would dive into, because this is the way I think it works. There's, a, there's this graph here, right? It's flat here, comes up and comes over here. And this is your air fuel ratio. Okay, now I think where I've gone wrong for a while, and now I figured it out, was I was talking to LaVon Miller, owner of Firepunk. He was talking about nitrous use. It was when I was out there and I don't know, for when we were dyno in the truck and picking up that uh, deck plate engine. Um, he said that if you get on the lean side of the curve, well, what he's referring to is this air fuel ratio. The lean side, from my perspective right now, is gonna be over here. This will be the rich side. Now, when you see these trucks billowing black smoke going down the sled pole track and stuff like that, especially a lot of the mechanical engines, there's some benefits there. Now, obviously you're pushing fuel into the rings, the crankcase, I get it. We're talking about competition right now, okay? What happens is when you spend time over here, the fuel is actually cooling the cylinder down. And I would agree. Now, are there better ways to do it? Sure, but until sled pulling allows for some actual cooling to happen, like nitrous use. Or some methanol or something. Right now, those guys are mostly either stuck with just fuel or they're allowed to inject water. Anyway, that's where they hang out. Then you have stoic, which for a diesel, I want to say it's, it's higher than gas. I think it's in the 17s or maybe it's 19s. I'll put it right here after I look it up. But that is the most efficient place to be. Well, I think, in my opinion, that's also one of the hottest places to be. So on this curve here, we'll call it here and we'll call it here, okay? Those places right there is when you're gonna have your highest in temperature cylinders. Like everything starts melting. And I think what was happening was I was spraying enough nitrous to clean up the fuel, but I was spraying just the right amount of nitrous where it was like perfectly burning to the point where it was super hot. And hot, high pressure like that, it just turns into a cutting torch. And as you guys have seen, um, long before I started YouTube, um, we've had some torch pistons. Now, what I think like LaVon is actually referring to is being on this side, this super, super lean part of the curve. And what I found was you'll add nitrous and the intake air temp really starts to drop. Like when we did that 2100 horsepower pull on PDD's dyno with the 07 on a stock 6.7 block, we were injecting way more nitrous and the, a lot of people on Facebook are like, oh, that's dumb, this is stupid. Um, uh, you know, it's great, I love the internet. Anyway, I added that much to cool everything back down. So when you're stretching these fuel systems out as far as we had to on such a small injector and a small pump, they get hot, they get lazy and you gotta clean all that fuel up. So what I was doing was putting enough nitrous in there to burn all the fuel and then I was also adding it to really cool down those cylinder temperatures. And another prime example, not to pick on anyone, I look at like uh, Bubby Payne's engine got a little hot at All Truck Challenge. 
Then there was also Gordon Lindemood's engine that got pretty hot in All Truck Challenge. And then we went the same distance as both of those guys did sled pulling within 10 feet. And our engine was fine. My EGTs are like 1450. Well, everyone thought I was crazy for running two 110 jets all the way down the sled pole track. What I was doing was basically practicing what I'm telling you guys right now. I sprayed enough nitrous to clean up all the fuel and then I added more to cool those cylinders down. So nitrous really does have essentially two duties in my opinion. Number one, in an air limited situation, it can spool the charger faster when you're at the line and it will also clean up the fuel that the turbo can't get. The second thing, and I honestly think it's the most important thing, is getting you to the lean side of that curve where everything runs cooler and it looks cleaner. Me personally, when I go to a sled pull track, I won't lie, I love seeing the big clouds of black smoke. It just reminds me of being a kid um, and watching it. When I'm at the racetrack or the dyno and stuff, especially if the dyno's inside, nothing is cooler to me than being able to do your power run and there's this like quick little burst of fuel and you guys will see it in all the videos. That quick little jaw and then the nitrous comes in, like that is cool to me. Like when people can actually see the drag race or see the dyno pole, to me that is far more impressive than blacking out the entire indoor dyno room or going down the racetrack and nobody can even see the scoreboard. Uh, and that's just personal preference. Sled pullers, you keep rocking on. Drag racers and dynoers, you guys got some work to do, in my opinion. Now, if you're dynoing like we do in a fuel only class, it's gonna happen. Had a GT55, come hang out, let's get it tuned in. And I think you'd be impressed what some really good custom tuning can do. Uh, especially if you guys are tuning yourself and you do see me around, I'm happy to give you my two months of experience that seems to be working out all right. But all in all, that's how I use nitrous. Um, Again, it depends on how much power I want to make uh, on how much I add. Uh, I usually, like most dyno runs I do now are a 110 and a 99. Meyer, when he went down to St. George, ran like an 88 and a 72 or 75. Uh, when I drag raced the 05, I was trying to use a 110 stretched out over some time and a 72 on the first part. Uh, at All Truck Challenge, we used, I think it was a 136 and a 99, I want to say. When we dynoed at our dyno and made 2,000 horsepower, it was three 136 jets. Um, and again, like I've said, I had one, sil or I had all three solenoids were 150, so they actually flowed 136. But uh, all in all, what I can tell you, most people are going to start out with a spool kit. And that's a great way to learn how to use it, how to operate it, maintain bottle pressure. Uh, and then you're either gonna do it dynoing or you're gonna do it drag racing. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions, but realistically, you just gotta go out there and kinda do it. And if you're not watching your EGT gauge and you're not watching the exhaust color out of your tailpipe, you're gonna have a really long learning curve. Uh, and again, I hope that kind of graph made sense. They don't make, to my knowledge, an affordable AFR gauge for a diesel. Um, what I got told was that the gauges are expensive, they get plugged, they don't always read right. So I don't have any good solutions for you on that one. I know Firepunk has a nice one on their S10, but I'm not sure what it costs. I'm assuming with the amount of money and time and effort those guys have put in there, it wasn't cheap, but it probably works really good. Um, anyway. I hope this kind of cleared up some of the questions you guys had on nitrous. Again, I apologize, it is so cold. Um, it's hard to even keep my oil temp up on my truck right now, it's so cold out here and I don't feel like flogging a bunch of nitrous in there. And luckily for us, we have tons of B-roll of using nitrous throughout the last four years. Um, as far as anything else goes, I mean, get a good quality kit. If you have questions, all of you guys know how to get a hold of me. Facebook, Instagram. Um, as of late, I found the request bins on Instagram and Facebook. So I know some of you guys might have sent me a message and the time expires to respond. So feel free to reach out again. I'm more than happy to help you out with nitrous kits. Uh, I personally really like the Nitrous Express crew. Um, I get all my parts from them and they've treated me really, really well. 
uh, nitrous outlet I used as my first kit. They did a great job. Uh, it got the job done. And the NOS system, to me, it just didn't seem as diesel oriented as those other two companies, but who knows, maybe, maybe they're great. Um, last thing I wanna to touch on is bottle filling. Most places that you live, you'll have a speed shop uh, I know in like Southern California, the place I used to use was called G and J aircraft supply. Uh, they were in like uh, Ontario area area. Uh, I know in Albuquerque, New Mexico, there's this speed shop. It, it's like a mini summit. I'm pretty sure summit fills bottles. If not, and you need to do the mother bottle, mother bottle fill, what you do, you put the big bottle, you'll get it from like air gas. For instance, you'll put it outside in the sun. You'll put your 15 pound bottles in mama's deep freezer. Make sure you clear that with her though. I'm not taking responsibility for that. And basically you're gonna gravity feed it. Um, the reason why people heat up the mother bottle and freeze the little bottle is so the nitrous will flow in a pressure differential. Anytime you heat something up, it raises the pressure as the molecules start bumping up against each other. And when you freeze it, they slow down, lowers the pressure, shoots the nitrous through the line. Uh, and I did that many times. It's very hard to get them all the way full, but you can usually get 12 pounds in them pretty, pretty easy. Uh, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. Give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Drop them in the comments. Uh, I am trying to get to everyone's comments as this channel grows. If you guys notice, I'll like respond to like 20 in 10 minutes. I, I'm trying to every night sit down in front of the camera or in front of the phone and answer your guys' questions uh, at that point. Um, that way I kind of dedicate some time to you guys and I'm not sitting there trying to do it throughout the day and not putting a lot of effort into it. Uh, and make sure you subscribe. Uh, we have a really, really big announcement coming on the following video that'll drop on Thursday. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think you guys will enjoy the next one. As always guys, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.